Hello everybody, welcome to Full Game Kit Operation Desert Road, the tutorial overview. My name is Diederik Groesbeek, I'm with Xform Games. We're based in the Netherlands, we're a game development studio. And we also release asset store packages. So, what are we going to do in this tutorial? Let's have a look. This is an overview of what we're covering. It's a global video, so we're just covering the basics. Let's get going. All right. Let's get this away. And let's start up Unity. It has to connect first and log me in. I'm going to create a new project. Um, and I'm going to call it ODR Tutorial. Give it a nice place here. Oh, this is fine. Just in my temporary folder. Create project. There we go. All right. This is a new project. Nice and clean. You see. You you probably notice I have the the old style layout. Uh, this works for me, but of course you can do it any way you like. I'm going to import the package now. So let's go to Assets Import Package. You'll probably download it uh, for this tutorial. I have a package on my computer, which I'm going to import from my computer. You'll do it from the Asset Store. Where did I put it? So here are all my projects releases all right here it is I don't know how long this is going to take for this version so I'm pretty curious all right there it all is I'm going to import it all all right so there we are this is what you'll probably see after export uh, after importing the package. Uh, let's just take a look over here. Here's our project. You'll see that in my version it includes the asset store tools. Uh, won't be there probably in your version. Uh, the project assets, the most important folder over here. The a uh, user folder. Uh, I can probably delete this. It contains uh, some saved data, prog user progress, user settings, I'll delete uh, that. Uh, some templates, this, this will probably, uh, this will not be included in the final package. Alright, um, so let's open up the project assets, uh, the most important of course. Uh, here you'll see some 2D stuff, some external 2D stuff, icons, splash, uh, banners, uh, stuff for um, for mobile like I can see you see okay not really very exciting plugins not that exciting either um, uh, we have the resources this is the most important folder of your project it contains the 3d files all sorts of 3d files uh, materials textures that sort of stuff then we have the audio. It contains the mixer, which is uh, like the, the the data file for your for the playing your audio, uh, music, and the sound effects that's um, organized into subfolders. Then we have the data. <coughs> it's mostly level and mission uh, level design and mission data. Uh, fonts localization. Here you have the text files I can open it up for you so you can see it contains all the text that is used in the game uh, for the play button for instance it says play all right materials these are the materials that are not associated with any of the three uh, uh, 3d objects so the loose materials for the effects and uh, some other stuff Prefabs, also a very important directory. Uh, we'll get to that later. 
uh, shaders, sprites. Here we have all the 2D stuff. Mm, and some loose textures also used primarily for effects and some miscellaneous stuff. So those are the assets. Next there are we have the scenes folder. We have a couple of scenes there. The most important one is the game scene. I will open that up in a second. But we'll all, uh, we also have an overview of some of the assets. For instance, uh, this one of the buildings. So you can take a look at all the stuff that is in there. Uh, one containing some miscellaneous stuff and one containing some vehicles. So it's a good place to start if you want to create your own uh, your own assets or if maybe you want to tweak some uh, parameters. But let's go back to the game scene. We'll get to that later. Um, the next folder here in the project is the scripts folder. It contain, contains engine related scripts, game related scripts and vertex bake related scripts. Vertex bake is <coughs> not this is more advanced uh, scripting set. Uh, we'll not look at that I think. Uh, the game related scripts. Um, place all your game specific code here and the engine code is located here. You'll probably not want to go into the engine scripts at all for your adjustments. So, okay, <coughs> that covers that. Then we have some uh, documentation that is included inside the package. Most important is the readme file. I'll open that up. You can, here you can see which version of the package you're running. Uh, controls, cheats, and the version history, of course, also pretty important. This is version 1.0, very first one. Mm, maybe in your in, in your ver in your version of the package will also uh, will already have some entries and some improvements there. I don't know. Okay, um, and the documentation, of course. Here it is. I advise you to browse through it. Uh, most of the stuff that's covered in the documentation is also mentioned in this video. So if you already read it, you might want to consider skipping the video. All right. Um, next up, I want to play the game. Just give it a quick run. I'm going to mute the audio, otherwise um, it will be too loud. Okay, so for now uh, I'm going to try to enable the cheat so you guys can see how that works. I'm going to click on the game uh, game object, this game object over here. It contains a lot of the global variables uh, like settings, a user, branding, state, platform details. Um, this all opens up and shows all sorts of stuff. But for now I'm interested in the settings. I'm going to uh, disable this one and enable the cheats and save the settings. Now if I play the game the, if everything works the cheats should be enabled. It should work. So now we can go into this screen and give ourselves some money. Alright, quite enough. I was pr Oh, of course you cannot see that. I was pressing the C key which gives you money um, that's also listed in the readme file. Here you can see the cheats. See, give 100 credits in shop. Uh, and then we have two important ones, uh, mission complete and game, game over. I'll try those as well. But first let's buy a cool vehicle. Um, I've always liked this one. There you go. 
and since cheats are enabled now we can also just skip to the mission complete screen by pressing the K button mission complete All right. so I think that works it's pretty handy and maybe for the final package we'll add some more cheats um, and they're pretty uh, simple to implement for yourself as well uh, I'll just maybe I can quickly show you how that's done I'll just search for the cheat script here it is I'll open it up and as you can see it's a uh, pretty simple script that tests for user input so um, here's the one that gives you uh, additional money here's the one that completes and fills the mission so it's it's pretty easy to add something here if you're uh, even if you're a beginning programmer well and keep in mind that of course this is only updated when the cheats are actually enabled so make sure you have them enabled all right for the next bit we're going to adjust some of the game's variables and create a test build of the game so first we want to configure the game in a way that we can easily test it as you spot it when you press play you first get a splash screen a menu screen and you have to wait and then you have to press play and you get to get ready stuff so if you're working on your game that can be pretty annoying that you have to wait all that time before you can get to the testing so what we're going to do now is configure your game in such a way that it automatically starts um, in game so this takes us to the game script again and there's uh, a lot of stuff going on here and can be a bit overwhelming but I'm going to talk you through it so don't panic all right let's just open up the details here's the name of the game and some helper bulls so show preloaders already disabled show menu we're gonna disable that we're gonna disable that and we're gonna open up platform we don't want to be here we'll skip that state is not very interesting for now as well branding is pretty interesting branding configures all the brand related uh, elements in your game like the splash screen you see, you see before the menu but also the clickable buttons and advertisements you see all over that is all configured over here um, what we want to do is get rid of all of that for now for our test so we're gonna click some stuff like show splash we don't want to splash that just takes time uh, we don't want this show links clickable links we'll just disable all that stuff we don't want any advertisement so okay there you go settings settings are like the, the graphic settings and language settings all that, that sort of stuff um, what do we want we don't want the tutorials we want the cheats enabled for now uh, any other stuff I want this on this one that's the localization file that's being used we don't want the mobile version for now because we're going to create a standalone Windows build mm, this is all fine maybe for testing I want music disabled sound effects disabled and so now I can click this one again <laughs> and this is all just fine uh, for the settings I need to press save settings so these are saved as you can see ODR settings otherwise it will just load up the the configuration it had beforehand and almost for nothing user I don't know if I need to change anything here yeah I can I can uh, say that we 
always want to start off with the Apache. So, Apache prefab. And I want more credits. I want like 50,000 credits. Progress, players owned. I can do all sorts of stuff here. Maybe too complex for now. I think I need to save this as well. Yeah, save user data. There you go. And I don't think we want to open this up for now. So we'll just keep that closed. Now we're going to save the scene by pressing Ctrl S or going File, Save Scene. And let's see what it does right now when I press play. Alright, so here we are. We entered the game immediately so we didn't have to wait for anything. So that's exactly what we wanted. I'm going to give it some more lives. Then we could just test it directly by pressing play. Let's just see if we can find the Apache prefab. There we are, there we are. So it contains a script that's called the player script and here we can set some parameters. For instance, the, um, I was talking about the lives, max lives, let's set that to 5 for now. So, and I wanted to have a bomb. Right, there we go. We don't have to save that because I'm uh, changing a prefab here. It's located over here as you can see in the in the prefabs players uh, folder and since I'm directly editing a prefab I don't have to apply anything or set anything it's just automatically saved All right so I have now I have more lives and I have a bomb pre-equipped which I can use to make everything explode like this okay so that looks fine it's exactly how I want to be testing and now I'm going to create a first build using these settings so I'm going to build settings I have to make sure that my game scene is included here I want to create a PC Mac uh, a, PC, a PC build um, I can take a quick look at the player settings of course we're gonna create a build I'm going to put it on the desktop for now. I'm going to create a folder. Tutorial built. Audi Air tutorial. So let's build it. Luckily it builds pretty fast. The game is now very large. run it there it is okay looks fine all right that's it for this video please join me for the next one in which we'll be adding our own art assets and creating our own cool game see you then